they reach gigantic sizes about six million years after the, the worst mass extinction in Earth's history, where about 90% of life died. Imagine swimming in a vast ocean, a world of different shades of blue with enough space and resources to grow some of the largest creatures this world has ever seen. In the Nevada mountain ranges, NHM's Dinosaur Institute, in collaboration with the University of Bonn, may have discovered the earliest gargantuan life on this planet, a new species of enormous ichthyosaur, extinct marine reptiles that lived at the dawn of the dinosaur age. By studying and comparing this new discovery to modern day giants, we can better understand how life got to be so big. Simbospondylus jungorum vivió hace 246 millones de años en el centro de Nevada. Esto era un océano con otras especies de ictiosaurios, otros reptiles marinos, amonites, peces, en un ecosistema bastante estable. Este ictiosaurio representa una especie gigante que medía entre 17 metros y es el primer gigante que vive en los océanos, de hecho en todo el planeta Tierra. Mi participación en este estudio fue usar mi conocimiento de evolución en ballenas y cetáceos para poder hacer comparaciones con los ictiosaurios. Ichthyosaurs and cetaceans, like whales and dolphins, have long been used as an example of convergent evolution, meaning that although not closely related, both groups evolve similar body structures. Ambos grupos evolucionan de ancestros terrestres que se adaptaron, regresaron de cierto punto a, a la vida en los océanos. Patitas, evolucionaron a aletas y los orificios nasales se movieron a diferentes partes del cráneo para poder respirar, poder sacar las narices y volverse a sumergir. Pero también hubieron otros cambios relacionados a las dietas. Unlike cetaceans, ichthyosaurs grew large very early in their evolutionary history, just three million years after their initial dive into aquatic life. Ichthyosaur's gigantism was likely thanks to the boom in ammonites and the eel-like conodonts filling the ecological void following the world's worst mass extinction. So the rules of living in the ocean are the same. They're just separated by millions of, of years. In the case of ichthyosaurs, they evolved gigantic body sizes relatively quickly after a mass extinction. And cetaceans are also bouncing back, evolving after another mass extinction. These groups independently went back into the ocean. I hope that the big takeaway is to realize how life has evolved to adapt from land into marine environments and how evolution works in the deep time and how we can use fossils to tease out details about the evolution of gigantic body sizes after a mass extinction.